your mom, your dad, your rabbit Frederick. Yes, it's Frederick. <laughs> Your mom, your dad, your rabbit Frederick, Frederick, put that carrot down, don't kill the family, don't kill the neighbors, don't, don't eat that last packet of bourbon creams. Frederick! Hello again, everybody. You're listening to another episode of Twin Humanities. And uh, one humanity, he is the other humanity. Together we are two of the humanities. That's where we smash sort of bracelets together in this big magical, <laughs> <laughs> big magical whoomsh. Form of a helmet. So E3 happened. E3 did happen, but before that, what's your name? Oh, I'm CJ. Hello. And I'm Paddy. Hello. Hello. Did you hear that E3 happened? Oh, um, there's something I have to interject before we, we go really into Already? that. Seeing as, we're, um, seeing as we are a primarily... A, a Dark Souls podcast. Um, there, there's the Dark Souls Two trailer, correct? Uh, which happened in the Microsoft conference, and uh, even though it was on 360, completely and utterly embarrassed Rise, mm-hmm. which followed it, which was on new technology and looked 17 acres shiter. So I heard um, you like quick time events. And and the <laughs> the um, yeah, yeah, press X to win. Press X no, 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 no. It was press B and then press X to win. Just to make sure you actually wanted to do that quick time event that you started. Are you sure you want to kill him? Because we'll give you an out. Apparently, it doesn't matter what buttons you press as well. What? The, some of the journos that were, that were there. What? So that's that's obviously in fantastic so shape. Press B, then press summit. Yeah. Are you still holding the controller? Oh, good. He's dead. But the interesting thing is, I, I saw um, our, old, um, our old friend Vati Vidyas. Uh, coverage of the the new gameplay trailer hmm. and he mentioned something really really amazing i mean he's he's fantastic at noticing uh lore and 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 the stuff which uh which falls falls down the side of the couch when playing it Indeed. like uh, like the stuff that's up on the forum at the moment with where he spotted that um, and Orlando is based on Milan Cathedral and mm-hmm. Chateau de Chambord in in France but um, 15 seconds into that gameplay trailer, you see what I thought initially was um, the character lighting the bonfire. Mm-hmm. No, the bonfire is being extinguished. Ah, you showed me this on the old Twitter book, I think, or somewhere. Yeah, but but if that's the case, do you have a certain amount that you can stoke a bonfire with um it, it, you know if you if you're if you're say extinguishing a bonfire to perhaps have enough flame to light one in future does that remove a safe point behind you so it essen- essentially so you've got like a lump of wood and you can put the lumps of wood but to get them out of that bonfire and put them to another thing you take the lumps of wood out of the first bonfire so you're saying like that, that reinforcing the bonfires is a finite amount. Yeah, you you can you can de-enforce the bonfire. You, maybe uh, that will counteract the ability because I heard them say you could walk between bonfires from the start. So maybe that will help balance that out a bit. I don't know. I mean, um, uh, the uh, the the chap himself sort of gives gives well ties it to to Dark Souls lore and within. Uh, that it's it's Lord Lord Gwyn that's that's feeding the flame, and it's humanity that's being sort of popped to feed the flame, to feed the bonfire, and it's the it's the fire keepers that essentially ignite the bonfire when you give them humanity and stuff. Mm. Uh, so, is 
taking that step back in the law is the, is the, are there certain parts of that which aren't there yet is this the spread of the curse and I don't know I, I only saw the video once this morning go and watch Varty video videos mm. YouTube I've only seen the trailer literally maybe one time and that was kind of half on one side as well but it, it, it was it was a really interesting thing to note and um, uh, the the mirror knight looks phenomenal which looks like a monk boss which I called. You did. In, you I, did I called call. that in the in the uh, in the first comment section from Mike Werther's playthrough. <laughs> um, but uh, something that I've that we, uh, that was also on the Varty video um, piece was that if the if somebody comes through and, and smashes through from the Mirror Knight's um, uh, shield, hmm. the Mirror Knight isn't down. You've actually got that person to fight as well as the Mirror Knight. Yeah, I saw that. And if they do it again, they can bring in another Black Phantom to get you. So you're essentially fighting two Black Phantoms and a Mirror Knight. Which is, let's be fair, redonkulous. But also awesome. <laughs> It'd be incredible if, if during that battle as well, that there is, if uh, soul signs start to appear on the floor. Oh, Christ, you, yeah. You can. I mean, they're, they're working on dedicated servers for this as well. Mm. But if you've got, if you've got the mirror at night, if you've got two black phantoms on you, and you you can find, you can go into the battle as human, and you can find uh, soul signs on the floor. So essentially, these <laughs> like, you, they could be like three versus two. Call plus, the friends. Yeah, it'd be like <laughs> two black phantoms, the mirror night, plus two bros and you. <laughs> that will just be crazy awesome it's got okay it's either going to go two ways it's going to be an amazing fight or it's going to be the bit where everyone stops playing <laughs> I think it's I think they're balancing some, this incredibly some, well some bastard will just be like nope just going to stay here and not let anyone pass no I think they're balancing this incredibly well and with with the the lead in that they've given themselves mm. um, next next March it, it gives them time to you know to perfect it and stuff which is uh, mm. Speaking of March, we also we also were were kind of left a bit hanging dry on our guess that they'd get announced for the next gen platforms, which didn't happen. I still think I, I think, I think it uh, might be coming, but I I think we're not going to find out about it for a bit if it is, because I was expecting to mention like coming to next gen platforms, but we're not going to tell you which ones. I was expecting something, but we had nothing, so I can only assume for now that means a no. But TGS is coming up. I don't. I don't think it's a no. I think that um, that uh, Namco have been drip feeding the publicity absolutely perfectly for the games. I mean, really, really perfectly. Mm. And if if it comes up to Christmas time, um, and they say oh, we are planning a PS4 and Xbox One release, they'll I they'll get massive go amounts of news from that. Mm. If they'd have, if they'd have announced that at E3. Could have got lost in the shuffle, I guess. Yeah, it'd, it'd have been no further along than than just sort of showing off the demo. It just would have been lumped in with the demo itself. It's a factoid, but it's not going to, you know, be its own headlines for a while. Whereas if they if they um, release it nearer to the launch date of the title of the consoles, actually, mm. that's that's a, that's a bigger reason for people to upgrade. Because it, for, for me, that that that'll be the point that I'll buy a PS4. <laughs> it's, well, it's, already, it's already established that I'm getting one, but that would help. That's it's your birthright. <laughs> um, I I was I was talking to uh, to someone on Twitter today, um, uh, Rhonda, and and she's she's as SDF as you are. <laughs> it, it was it was quite funny to see the level of SDFness. It was almost as if your cap had been borrowed. <laughs> See, I'm okay. I tried to look at this E3. Um, should, should we move on to E3 this now? Let's move yeah. on to E3. Um, I tried to look at this E3 with, with as open a mind and as clean a slate as possible because this was this was the biggest E3 in years, wasn't it? I mean, let's not mess about. This was gigaton big E3. Yeah. Um, and I went in with a bit of an open mind. And then by the end of it, I was just like, ah, oh, I was right before. I like my PlayStations. I think... Yeah. And I tried to look at it as open as possible, but, like, the Microsoft, they showed games. I mean, I'm given that. They showed a lot of games. Um, not necessarily the games that would interest me, 
uh, like, oh, a game from the Call of Duty people. Yay. I, I might buy a Call of Duty game for the first time. It's not, you know, I've not, it's not really my, it's not my scene, as it were. Um, Rise looked like, yeah, just like stolen God of War style, but not God of War. Lol, look at my quick time events game. Which looked it looked all right, but it didn't look like a, the kind of game that sells a console. It looked like what was it like? The, what was it called? There was a Spartan game on the PS2, Shadow of Rome. Okay. Um, and that was kind of like you know you were a Roman, you were a gladiator, and you sort of fought in the arenas. And then there was another bit where you were like a smaller guy and you were sneaking around. And it was it it's very it's you know it reminded me of that. And that was a it was a B game. It it wasn't a I mean, I like a B game, but it looked like a proper B game. Just, I mean, un- it, it looked uninspired. I mean, I, my worry with Rise um, is that Rise with a Y. Yeah, so it's like <laughs> Rise this Reese. like Rise Tech. Um, <laughs> my worry is with a game like Rise that once a game has been broken and uh, uh, broken apart and doesn't work as many times as that's reported to have. That this is this is a you know, there's been numerous incarnations of the game. It was initially a connect game and a first person game. Um, Apparently it wasn't. Apparently it was originally a controller, then they put Connect in, then they took it out again. Yeah. I think there was an article by Matt Leone on Polygon about yeah, it. Yeah, and I've read bits of it. Yeah. And it, like it was then it... and mm. then they, they they went to third person with it and I, I it comes back to to what I said about fuse the other day Mm. and i where my inkling was with fuse that overstrike didn't wasn't working that they they then they then refitted it into what became fuse Fuse. and um kind of got to the point where ea wanted their money back Mm. and and uh, we're just saying, right? Well, it's this is the best shape we can get it in, which which is backed up by by your response to the game, really. Um, yeah, it, it was it being just sort of, you know the AI being off, and there was. I, I just I just wonder if a game's become that unfocused as to whether it can can reassemble and work again. And it's mm. something that that's troubling me a little bit with. Um, that's that new fitting of XCOM that's happening. The uh, the th- sort of third person stealthy thing. Is it the sixties one? Yeah. Fifties looking one. Oh, I think that's looking great. I'm just I, I I I'm hoping that that it that it's there. But there's that nagging thought in the back of my mind that maybe development had, had come so far and they were just thinking we've got to do something. Hmm. So um, yeah, that's that's uh, yeah that was on my mind. But it, mm. it certainly crossed my mind with Rise because what was there? I mean, I, I was looking at that, and and sort of when when it cut to the big buildings above, I was thinking if this was God of War, there'd be something absolutely fucking massive coming through from the top of there. Yeah, like someone's guts would be hanging out on the left, and there'd be some sort of giant snake-headed beast. Well, kick, be, kicking down a tower and, you know... Yeah, there'd be some sort of mahoosive chap, like, smashing that building down. And I know that's not the thing that they're going for, but mm. I, I've, I've played that game. Mm. And that game looked a lot better than Rise did. Yeah. It looked, it looked a lot more flavourful and had a lot a lot more... Uh, a lot more colours in the paint pots than, than Rise <laughs> seems, to have, seems to have done. And the thing that annoys me about Rise is there's a, a, a comment I've read about it where it's the, the the quick time dude killings. Apparently there's going to be like 80 or 90 different animations for that. It's like, big whoop. I'd I rather think. just have one or two and I'd not rather, have it happen on every enemy, you know? It's, I'd rather just crack into them. Yeah, it's, it's just to say. Apparently they're kicking automatically as well. Oh, dear. Apparently they, you can turn them off or something, but they'll still kick in automatically, which is... I hope that's wrong. I hope that's a misquoted thing because that just means that just sounds awful. I think the, the thing was as well that um, with it coming in the presentation after Dark Souls 2, Dark Souls 2 looked 10 times better than that did. Mm. 
And I only saw I only saw about half of the Dark Souls two thing on the actual stream because I had to run out, grab something, I came back and it already started. I was like, for God's sake. I think the interesting thing to to note for for many of us before the uh, the the Microsoft conference started was that even with the elephant in the room hmm. with DRM and used games and all that sort of stuff, twenty four hour checks and all that garbage. Um, everybody was really excited for the conference mm. uh, because we didn't know if, if those issues were going to be addressed, but we knew that they were just going to show us games, 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 games. Fantastic. I'm mm. completely and utterly fine with that. Yeah. Um, but the stuff that, that came out after the conference was just baffling. You, at the point where you think... Microsoft can't tie themselves into any more knots. They find a new one. It's one of those things. It's you get to the point. It's like, just tell us what's right. It can't do your reputation any more damage than you've already had done by all this. You know, one day this will be the thing, and then then the next day, oh no, actually no, that doesn't work like that. And then the next day, actually no, you were right the first time. It's like, just tell us what you want. You know, just tell us what's actually happening. Tell us what, you know, what will be the DRM stuff. Just tell us. Write it down on a bit of paper and tell us. Don't just kind of say, oh, we'll tell you later. Oh, we're not talking about that. And, oh, yeah, maybe. It's like, oh. Well, they, just they come, just tell us. For in positions of power mm. that were then sort of interviewed afterwards. And you were listening to the answers that they were given and just, what? There was, a, mm. there was a, an interview which, you know, I, I don't have to hand, so I'm going to be sort of quoting from the air. Paraphrase. Um, yes, and and it was with Don Matrick of uh, of Xbox, and they were saying that um, you know what about those 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 people that are a, a military service, and, mm. or the people that have got um, no internet or poor internet? And the answer was buy an Xbox 360. Oh God, yeah. Seriously. Oh. And, um, I I then um, I then saw a um, a piece which was. I can't think where it was where it was linked from. I think it was linked via Twitter, hmm. and it was from a, a military magazine in the states, where basically the headline was "Microsoft sticks two fingers up at everybody in service," hmm. which, I mean, it's a dramatic headline, but essentially they are. Yeah, um, that's that's what they're saying. It's like if you're in, the, or if say your internet isn't very. Even our friend Gigawings in Indonesia with his terrible, terrible internet. Hmm. Um, if if your internet isn't very good, no next gen for you, Sonny boy. And that uh, just seems bonkers. It's like they don't want people to have their machine. They don't, they're only targeting the people that are rich with too, you know, with enough money to afford this crap. But they, they come across as, as rich people that have never wanted for anything in their life. And I think mm. there's a certain arrogance within the fact that, well, we're going to do all this. We're going to watch you. We're going to listen to you. We're, um, if you've if you've not checked in within 24 hours, you can't play your games. If you mm. get um, if your internet goes out, you can't play your games. And there's a certain arrogance within the fact that. Oh, people love Xbox. They'll just accept this. Well, I've heard it justified as they're doing that so you can play the games while you're waiting for something else to... Like, while you're waiting for a match on another game, you can play a different game without swapping the disc. It's like, no thanks, I'd rather just wait and swap my discs. Thank you very much. I, I, just, I just think it's bizarre, and I it's think that, that there will have to be an astonishing climb down. Because mm. um, there, was a, there, was, there was something that I, I saw yesterday, which... Um, I've I put on my Twitter yesterday, which and um, and also sort of followed up with today. Amazon US were doing a poll as to which of their customers uh, were going to go towards the Xbox One. Yes, they did. And, and the, uh, the and the PS4. And the the article that I read yesterday um, had something along the lines of uh, Xbox One was 884 votes. The PS4 was seventeen thousand four hundred <laughs> votes, um, and Amazon actually closed the closed the poll early. <laughs> it's supposed to run to to the twentieth of June. Yeah. Um, and the final results were Xbox One, two thousand one hundred sixty two, PlayStation Four, thirty eight thousand nine hundred eighty four. Christ on a bike. If somebody at Microsoft isn't is He's still sort of carrying on and going, no, this is the direction. People will come round. They'll work out what we want them to think soon. Seriously, I've, I've, known, I've known computer wars. I've known console wars. And they've always been kind of 
on an even footing, you know, snares yeah. and Mega Drive and all that kind. And there was Mega good things to be said for every platform. You, Absolutely, you could, yeah. You can make a case for them. Yeah, and and, and you know the the situation uh, like now, you'll get people that have, you know, that are lucky enough to to have a PS3 and an Xbox and stuff like that, and they'll consider the multi-platform games, which one works best on which system, and mm. you know there'll be specifics for each one which celebrate the machine um and that's that's great but i've i've never known this degree of i think it's wonderful that people are standing up and going that stuff you're trying to shovel down our throats frankly you can fuck off yeah you're not having my money and the majority of people that i've seen have, have, have been like that um and i the, the stance baffles me and as, as someone that's um you know, had had the original Xbox and has has gone through two three sixties. Mm-hmm. Um, it's I'm I'm going to miss Halo. I'm I'm going to miss I'm going to miss that that franchise that world sort of quite a bit. Um, yeah. And you know, there's there's other games. I mean, I've got a stack of Xbox three sixty games and a massive stack of Xbox games. But there's no way on God's green earth I'm ever going near that console. And even if they do a climb down. Any company that would come up with that in the first place can sod off because mm. even if you do a climb down, you came up with those things in the first place. Also, um, this this fact of not being able to play games um, if you're not online. Correct. What happens in a decade from now when they switch the servers off? Yeah, I see all that. The money I've that seen... you've spent, mm. how many games have you got? You've got fuck all. You can still watch TV. But that's all you can do with it. You're essentially licensing those games. You're buying them, but you're buying a license for a 10-year a lifespan. And, you know, perhaps there's the, there's the thing that can be said uh, for, you know, maybe the, the Xbox 2 or whatever it's going to be called is, uh, is will have instant backward compatibility because it can do that through the cloud and blah, blah, blah. I don't care. I like my legacy. I'm a collector. I like the boxes still. Um, I, like I like to take to... a thing out of a box every now and again, plug it in, and have a run. Absolutely, absolutely. Hmm. Uh, if you can't do that, yeah, you know, I mean, like they said that they, you know, they're not, you know, all oh, that's in ten years' time. The console's not out yet. We're not going to talk about that yet. It's like, no, talk about it. Yeah, it's important. We want to know. And it's, it's for some people, it is, it's a deal breaker. That on its own is a deal breaker. But besides all this, you know, twenty-four hour check garbage, that on its own is enough of a deal breaker for some people I've seen online. Some of the language that's being used is delicious in itself. Like I mentioned last time, that's a, that's a conversation that, that's still in progress. <laughs> like, are you actually going to let these people out of the room? <laughs> are they, are they ta- Are they talking like this? Are those people in the Matrix? <laughs> DRM. But, See, uh, apart, from, apart from all this service crap that's none of it's got resolved over e3 they've not answered any questions really about it they've not really fixed the mistake they made with their opening show um and while you know while people say yeah well e3 was for the games and the reveals for the entertainment stuff no that's not what i want and it's an entertainment console it's a games console show me games first you know don't reveal it with half an hour of talking about TV because that just shows you don't want us. And regardless how many games you then happen to show at E3, big whoop, you didn't talk about us in the first one. I mean, I, I, I wasn't as hard on the first press conference as, as a lot of people. Oh, I hated it. I thought it was the worst one I've ever seen. Um, no, it's not the worst All one the I've ever seen. All the crap people give E3 about Robert, like EA even, about their sort of slightly uninspired one. It was just turgid bullshit. No, they... The first one, if they, if they were going to break them up into two, and announce the console and show what it what it can do, and then announce the games, mm. I was I, in all honesty, I was all right about that. But the the thing that they've that they've yet to even vaguely go near is the elephant in the room, um, and that elephant is getting bigger. It's actually it's it's pretty much a giant metal rabbit now called Frederick. It's having babies. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, Microsoft V three, I'd give them a four out of ten. I, well, I thought the I thought the, the games that they showed were um, were entertaining. I won't I won't have anything said again really against the the games because the the plants versus zombie game looks fantastic. I'd yep. play the hell out of that. Interesting um, by the, the the new Insomniac one, uh, Sunset Overdrive looked looked, looked like it could be. It was pretty in the trailer, but it looked like the target for something that could be pretty fun. 
that looks brilliant. That mm. looks absolutely brilliant. And likewise, yeah. even though I'm I'm not a, a Call of Duty fan, um, Titanfall looks good. It looks like those the, those people that that love that kind of game will really enjoy it. I like the I like the look of the the fast mechs in there. It seems to have a really good pace. And whilst it's it's not my thing, mm. I, c- I could admire what it does. Oh yeah, uh, totally. Yeah, it looks fast. It looks fluid, and it looks it looks like exactly the kind of game that the Call of Duty people, the Call of Duty fans, will enjoy. Well, if, if um, which the, is why if it's, console, it's not for me. Yeah. <laughs> if, if the console sells as poorly as it's initially it's looking suggested, like it might be. Yeah. Then are we going to see sort of the um, rather than in this gen where you've had 360 ports? Um, sorry, you've had the 360 ported to PS3 mm. quite lazily, which has happened with with quite a few multi-platform titles. Um, are you then going to get the the opposite happening with uh, PS4 games being ported to Xbox Xbox One as an afterthought? Yeah, well, I mean the the PS4 architecture they've said is basically just like a PC anyway, so they can just build it and clickety boom and off it goes. I mean, I saw uh, like about the Indies uh, that were shown. Uh, you know, in Sony's conference, they brought out the eight Indies on stage at once, uh, and I read a bit by Charlie Hall on Polygon about it. Um, and yeah, the Octodad guys. Um, so they had a dev kit given to them, a PS4 dev kit, and within a couple of weeks, they had a fully working version of the game up and running. Yeah. You know, almost literally like a couple of weeks, and it was done. It's like, yeah, there we go, finished. Well, um, I mean, the, the interesting thing with uh, with indies, I mean, it, we've yet to really sort of cover the, the, the Sony conference, but mm. I watched I watched E2 last week. Which oh, yeah. Was, they um, sort of rather hastily set up, but incredibly entertaining um, London based E3 which covered the um, the press conferences hmm. and it also had indie developers coming in talking about their games and um, and it I, I'm, I didn't see the, the first two days um, because I was watching E3 but I wish I had it done because I was really entertained by uh, the third day in particular uh, the fourth day wasn't my cup of tea due to the people that were on it hmm. um but the, the the third day, Cara Ellison was on. You've got a world of time for, um, and it was just really entertaining. But the interesting thing was that these indie developers that were bringing stuff in, um, you know, at the end of the interviews, they were saying, "Oh, so so what are your plans for it for it next?" They were like, "Well, we've got a deal with Sony," and they kept saying that, mm. like over and over. It was like, "Yeah, we've we, we've got a deal in place with Sony," and at a certain point, I just laughed. Because, I mean, it seemed from the previous Sony press conference that they they made an effort with Indies that they were, rather than closing things off like Microsoft have, uh, have, and basically Microsoft saying, if you've not got a publisher, you can't put your game on our system. Mm. Whereas Sony have, have done the opposite and have really opened things up. Do you want to be on our system? Fine. And I've, I've heard great things about Nintendo, that Nintendo are playing catch up, mm. but they're really going the extra mile to make sure that it's not just a, a case of doing so for the sake of doing it. They're actually yeah. putting quite a lot of effort and enthusiasm into it. And, you know, Nintendo will always have love from indie developers because a lot of those people will have had a, a, a SNES or a, or a NES at a certain point in their childhood. Hmm. And, um, uh, to be fair, I mean, without wanting to paint too broader strokes, um, a lot of the indies you'll see are emulating those kind of graphics and yeah. that kind of style of games. It's the kind of games that you think they... They want to play, but so so I, from from two of the big three, mm-hmm. you've got a real focus on uh, on indie games, and there was one there was one I even saw today, um, which I, I bookmarked one that's on Kickstarter, and um, which looks like it's, it's channeling sort of Crash Bandicoot and mm. Super Mario sixty four, and Nintendo have approached them about that. So oh, that's cool. Given given the the fuss that's been made over it, so that's fantastic. You know the the, the wider um, sort of spectrum that that we can that we can have available for for our games. The more the merrier. Mm. But it was funny to see the amount of of people at, at, at E2 who were showing stuff off who were saying. Well, know, no, let's let's be fair. Microsoft they have got at least one indie, which they made great pains to point out. They've got Minecraft again. <laughs> yeah. It's like good job, guys. 
Yeah, that's courting new developers. Well done. <laughs> well, it's the, the, the Matt Lee's video. He's like, I'm Phil Harrison. It's my job to, to root out in developers that you've never heard of before. This one sold six million copies and he's coming. No one wants you to buy it again. <laughs> yes. Right. So, yeah. Let's move on because we've talked about Microsoft for half an hour now. Um, what else happened at E3? Who was next? It was EA next, wasn't it? Um, Was it? EA were next. Yes, they were. Okay. Um. And for the longest time, I was worried that EA were going to win E3 for me. What? And who'd have thought of that? You know, yeah. an EA would have won E3 for me because of one minute and nine seconds worth of footage of in two chunks. Mm. The one minute being the only thing I predicted almost right, Mirror's Edge 2. Mm. Yeah, Roy! Very, very happy. Apparently it's going to be open world as well, which I'm... On the fence about it could be good. Just don't make it like Prince of Persia 08, where you could go back and forwards across every bit of the landscape and it made it kind of bland. Give give me give me interesting paths to go down and kind of you know spider web it that sort of thing. But yeah, there is Edge two, which was a minute, and the remaining nine seconds was that little teaser for Star Wars Battlefront. Oh yeah, Big it time. was a pre-rendered bit of Hoth, and it doesn't matter. <laughs> because it's real and it's coming, and they showed it at E3, so now they have to make it. Oh, you say I'm. Uh, uh, as a, Couldn't as get a, two stuffs about the rest of it. I was like, well, look, looking Battlefront. As a as a as a Nintendo fan, um, I I'm currently sitting on a fence which I've painted the slogan EA can bollocks. So um, <laughs> yeah, we don't need your stinking FIFA. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so they showed they showed some sport, so you know they're sport. But the best, I think, probably the best thing that EA showed um, was when they had Battlefield Four on stage, when they had the sixty-four player match going on. Excuse me, live on stage. Yeah, you told and they me showed, about that. Yeah, they showed off the bits where they were blowing up supports and bits of building were coming down. You know, and it didn't look like pre-scripted stuff it looked like that's just a bit of building it looks no different to any other bit of building and they've broken yeah. that bit of building and it all fell apart and a tank fell off it was like that looked mental and at the very end when they broke the entire skyscraper mm-hmm. i was like that that right there that is next gen <laughs> i want to see stuff blow up i want to be able to see oh look let's blow up that bit of that house or let's blow up this entire building like dynamic explosions and like you can wait for the entire team to get into the building and blow it up on the whole team, which would just be glorious. Mm-hmm. It, it, that sort of thing really, really excites me. And it's the next and sort of stuff apart from Red Faction. You're not really a shooter guy either. I'm not a shooter guy. And that sort of thing, like, I'm probably not going to buy the game, but the technology on it, it's like, pff, yeah, put some of that in every other game. Yeah, <laughs> you're going to go, now put that into something I want to buy. Stick it in something <laughs> I want to play. <laughs> put it in Dark Souls. Let me break buildings. Ah. And ruin the flow of the old game. Um, but yeah, that was the couple of just the odd little bits from E3 that just stood out as like, yeah, from EA even that just stood out. And you, you watch them, you're thinking, actually, fair play, that looks really good. And it's not where I'd expect that kind of you know coolness to come from. Um, I don't often expect people like EA to kind of you know drop bombs like that. And this it was just in the middle of the video. It's like wow. Show us more of that. Mm-hmm. Give us more of that. Make more of a noise about that. We don't care about your sports. Show us more of that. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's that's why I was almost, until the Sony conference went on, EA were winning E3 for me. And I was confused because that should have happened. <laughs> yeah. Who, like, what, who planet am I? Do, what planet do we live on where EA could possibly win an E3? It, it's just bizarre. Um and it's, it's like they're getting back to what they were, their 2008 version, when they were kind of, you know, bringing interesting, weird games out. Yeah, but... I think edge back and we've got Battlefront, and these are the ones that I want to play again. I think the interesting um, thing to note is with that, that, you know, they, they released a lot of games which were very quirky, um, but didn't sell particularly well. It's the problem, um, isn't it? Um, I think that John Riccatello, is it? Uh, Rick, 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 Rickshaw Cellos. Um took that all on his shoulders and mm. uh, if he you know uh, the head of any company is beholden to the shareholders and if the shareholders are going these things aren't making enough money we need money mm. make another fifa true. i mean yeah. i know he's i know he's been lambasted as an arsehole but he was also in, cho- in charge of the uh, of the company 
when these games of, were announced. Yeah, the big interesting push. And frankly, I've got nothing but respect for him for that alone. Like, I won't hear, I won't hear bad words said about Richard Cello. Whatever else he did, he he was the guy that got us Mirror's Edge and Dead Space. So, I mean, thanks. And, you know, <laughs> if, somebody, if somebody was the head of a company that was releasing those, uh, it's probably probably disappointed in itself that they didn't sell they didn't connect with games mm. and you know I, I know many of them have, have become sort of cult hits now and you wonder how much of that is because you know Mirror's Edge hit under a tenor really quickly I know Dead Space um, must have gained a huge amount of its audience purely because of the fact that it that it became so cheap so quickly mm. I mean it does uh, help sometimes it really, it's an original, it was, yeah. especially an original IP like that unless you get something that just captures the imagination of everybody with an original IP, you're going to have to drop the price pretty quick because otherwise don't, you know, they, they're going to go buy a game they like too. Well, at a certain point, you're then looking at the long game. Mm. Uh, you're, you're, you're hoping to entice people in with, with cheaper prices and perhaps uh, it'll be the second game that brings in the bigger audience and makes mm. the biggest splash. Yeah, uh, but I mean, apart from that, E3, uh, EA didn't really, I keep saying E3, EA mm. didn't really drop anything else Outside of what I was expecting, outside of those couple of bits, they didn't really excite past that. It was very by the numbers. Mm-hmm. Hey, look, sports and stuff. It's, oh, who cares? You know, it's it, EA, isn't it? It's, I, yeah, they're, and they're always going to bring sports stars on stage. You stand there looking awkward. Interesting. They, oh, the guy. Oh, what was it? The bit that made me nearly cry where well, they had the MMA guys on. And oh. the guys, are, it's, yeah, they're talking, you know, like strategies and stuff, like you know. And I saw a guy, and he was going to take me down. So what I did is I took him down first. That's not a strategy, you. Oh, <laughs> Christ on a bike! I nearly fell off my chair. I'll send him round. Oh, what I might do is, but I can see he's going to come round and take me out. So what I am going to do, <laughs> if I take him out first. You know, forget about yeah, it. Yeah, I, I think I think with your strength and power, that could only end well. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's all about no. My my best stats are agility and tendon strength. Also bluffing, <laughs> <laughs> running and screaming, screaming like a banshee. It's actually running and taunting. It's the it's called paddying. <laughs> There's an official it's, word it's for it. on your top trumps card. It is. It is. It's the tactic I used to use when I used to play SmackDown with my friends at uni. I used to run and hide in the corner and taunt until I had special meter. <laughs> and no one used to notice. So I used to just run in, go, lol, special movement, run away again. Um, yeah, so the official term was Paddy. And it was very effective. So, you know, if I was in the MMA and it was a three on, it was, you know, if it was a, a three person match, I could win Beyond. just by standing out of the way. Yeah. Well, but, well yeah. done, you. MMA. Pff, Sweaty dick punching. Uh, who was next? Was it Ubi? It was Ubi. Um, I thought their show wasn't as bonkers as it usually was. Well, it didn't have that that Tabuscus bloke. Thank Christ. I had in last year, although that um, the last from uh, Aisha Tyler. Yeah, the last from Art. <laughs> so I saw it because I, I I missed this conference and in, in, in its entirety, and I mm. saw some footage of her this morning with uh, Lane Staley of Alice in Chains, and she was just embarrassing smart. It was so weird. It was occasionally <laughs> she was funny. Yeah, it was like occasionally Stop it was talking. funny. Yeah. In the girl wood t-shirt, it's like, we know, it was terrible. That's why we all talked about it. We don't want to talk about it again. Uh, but Ubi, I thought, the actual games they showed, um, a couple of bits of what I was expected. Um, rather too long, I thought, on Rocksmith at the start. And rather too long on Rayman as well. Mm-hmm. Like, we know, Rayman's coming. You don't need to show us three separate trailers. You know, it's like, we know. Yeah, but don't, don't tempt them into delaying it for another two systems. Yeah, because they're making more trailers. <laughs> <laughs> Christ. Um, I liked, um, again, I always like watching bits of Watch Dogs. Uh, I'm looking forward to that very, very much so. That looks like my jam. I'm going to usurp you now. Oh, okay. Um, because this is something you mentioned to me. I hadn't seen. And then um, I've seen a, a, a fuck ton of it the last couple of days. And it does indeed look really good. And that's The Division. I could, yeah. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, like, big time. And, and I love, I love the like, stuff with like the the map on the floor and isn't that? Uh, but something else that I I, I heard um, was that you can play it on your mobile and you can play a drone hmm. in the game. Oh, so, okay. so essentially, you can you can be elsewhere 
on your mobile or on your iPad and stuff, and you can play a drone in the game. That's kind of cool. Yeah, that's that's really really quirky. And the guy from uh, from the the division of Ubisoft who normally that you know it was said that he works on the on the B team games for uh, for the Assassin's Creed stuff mm. um, was really really happy to to finally have it in front of people and really proud of it mm. and, and double excited to see what what people did from here and I I, it, I don't know I, that, you can always tell when a developer's really really made up about something mm. that they've done and and what I liked about it as well is it looked really organic like you weren't getting quest missions pop like you know check out the abandoned paper mill um there's a dog down a well go find it it's just like oh i can hear some bullets i can hear some gunshots or there's some noise over there let's go have a look mm. and it, it it was like it looked really organic and admittedly the stuff they were talking when they're on stage showing it off and they were kind of you know talking just like hey wait i just need to put on my emp grenade hold on sure okay i'll flank you it's like no one says that in real life you, it's like you know wait what? gear up and yeah it's it's a bit scripted but because do you know do you know what we what we call you behind your back what do you call me from the back? Charlie Osco Tango Zebra. <laughs> ah, that's rude. Yeah, did well, Charlie Charlie Osco Tango Zebra. You mean Paddy? Yeah, he's moving into position. <laughs> and I liked like that you could yeah just meet up with a couple of pals, you know, mix it about, take on a mission. And the bit, the part of the trailer that just sang to me, and it's the stupidest little thing in the trailer, the the, the, the gameplay they showed, the stupidest little thing. A guy was taking cover behind a police car and he moved along the police car to kind of go past. One of the doors was kind of a couple of inches open. Hmm. As he walked past it, he knocked it shut. I was like, oh, oh that's oh. awesome. It's the smallest little thing. And I just thought, oh, yeah, OK. Yeah. There, was a, there was a thing that. That, was, um, that was pointed out um, by uh, Varty Vidya in, hmm. the, uh, in the Dark Souls, um, Dark Souls 2 reveal. And it's uh, the... One of the characters, when um, when they were running towards the boss, um, had there were there were all these sort of knights that were down different parts of like this hallway, and he was running towards you, hmm. and they were all swinging at him, and he's holding out his, his sword in front of him, and one of them swung and grazed the side of the sword. Oh, and that was essentially it wasn't a hit. The sword had deflected. The, the thing, even though he wasn't moving, but the game said that that swing had connected with the sword that he was holding and sparks flew off it. That's and I was cool. like, that's, that's, that's fantastic. Little touches will go a long way in this sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and I really liked, yeah, like everything about that Division game, it looked, reminded me a bit of, uh, I think it was called Freedom Fighters on the PS2. Yeah. Similar sort of thing, but it was like a single player one where you ran around with some chums and run around a city kind of doing stuff and it had a multiplayer mode where you could kind of recruit friends and fight your mates with it which was quite yes yeah, it was awkward but it was pretty fun it looked like a, a better version of that mm. and yeah i i'm really looking forward to that one i think i might actually get that it's um it's nice when e3 holds surprises as well mm. and it's not just updated um looks at games that have already been announced when there's something that comes way left of center and surprises you. I mean, Watch Dogs might not look like my kind of thing, in all honesty, but um, it came for, it came so left of field last year, um, and that that had people really, really bouncing up and down about it, and that was, yeah. that was quite, uh, quite fun in, in of itself. I mean, that's what people, I mean, people are saying, that, that The Division is this year's Watch Dogs. Yeah, I can I can see mm. that. I I just personally I, I I saw a lot more than a lot more in in the division than I saw in Watch Dogs. Watch Dogs doesn't mm. doesn't do. I it. mean, like the the secret uh, like the the secretiveness of like usually you find out a couple of things get leaked out before E three and kind of ruin the surprise of what they bring on stage. Hey, look at our thing that you heard about two days ago, and I yeah. don't think there's been much of that at all this year. There's, there's not. I can't think of anything um, that really leaked, other than maybe the the Watch Dogs trailer leaked a couple of days early. But we knew the Watch Dogs was a thing, so it doesn't really yeah, matter. That was probably timed, though. Yeah. Um, so I, I thought that was kind of cool. We, they they avoided all leaks, but yeah, I think Ubisoft. I think in the Assassin's Creed stuff they showed, look, you know, 
like the Assassin's Creed that I'm going to play. Mm-hmm. Ship combat, that'll do me. Thank you very much. Yes, please. I, to me, I mean, I'm I'm not um, I'm not a massive Assassin's Creed fan. It's, mm-hmm. it's never it's never massively hooked me in the way that I'd like it to. Mm-hmm. Um, but and I, I hate pirates. I pirate stuff bores the living tears out of me. <laughs> but I I really like the look of um, of of <laughs> ass flag as it's been named. <laughs> um, it, it it looks it looks like a really good game. Well, what um, what you'll notice if you if you uh, watch the trailers back again, you will notice that the Edward Kenway, the main the main guy, he does look a bit like Val Kilmer. Does he? Yeah, Val does Kilmer he? from his Batman years, and you'll look at it and you think, crap, it's battle for Val Kilmer now. Because he's um he's in uh the third game, isn't he? He's a, he's the character you play at the start. Uh. Edward, the guy. From, no, no. Yeah, Edward, Edward Kenway. No, same. no. Oh. The guy you play at the start of Assassin's Creed Three is Haytham Kenway. All oh, right, okay. Who's essentially you're playing Connor's granddad mm-hmm. in Assassin's Creed Four. I think it's his granddad. It's it definitely not his dad because his dad was in the game as well. Um, yeah, I think it's his granddad. So it's the same family. Mm-hmm. But yeah, um, but yeah, I, I thought Assassin's Creed Four was you know it showed what I wanted to see. Uh, there was nothing really surprising out of it, but there was nothing that stood out as bad. And I'll take that. I'll take I'll take a serviceable sequel. Yes, please, with more ships. Yep, that's what I want. Give me more ships. The ship combat in Assassin's Creed 3 blew my head off, so absolutely yes, give me more ships. Um, How do you feel about it being focused on one character in particular rather than um, the uh, Animus? You know, the... Um, the I'm... What do you do in the Animus? There will be some stuff about that, and there's been some speculation as to what it might be, whether it's maybe other uh, descendants that uh, Abstergo, the company, uh, the, the bad company, have got in their place. Um, but, yeah, it, it's complicated. I've had some theories, but I don't want to get to... Because if people haven't played Assassin's Creed, the end of Assassin's Creed 3, there's some pretty heavy spoilers in there. Yeah, so I've got some theories. Mm. And they're, they're saying that maybe you can jump in with friends and play with friends in Assassin's Creed 4, like sort of Dark Souls-y kind of way, where you can just jump in with your mates and run around and stab people together. It's like, well, how's that going to work? It's, it's about memories. You're remembering a thing. You didn't remember you also appeared next to yourself. Mm-hmm. It's weird. So maybe, I don't, I don't know. Ah, pff, who cares? Um, but yeah, it was all right. Um, but then, a couple of hours later, um, old Tretton walks on stage. Uh, and we got to Sony. Um, this, this was the point. This was the starting point for you being up about thirty six hours and essentially this was two a.m. going going a well last week. Yeah, this was two a.m. Uh, at English GMT, um, and their conference finished at about four. And then there was after shows that went on for another hour and a half. And by the time the after show had finished, I was so much of a nervous bag of energy I couldn't sleep. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, what did we see at the Sony? They talked about their TV stuff. And you know what the important thing is? Uh-huh. They didn't talk about the TV stuff for half an hour. They gave it five minutes and they moved on. It does telly. It's we can do telly in films, but we've got Breaking Bad, so stick your master chief up your dick hole. You know, it's like, oh okay, yeah, cool. Yep, great, great, move on. Um and they didn't dwell on it, which was nice. Um I don't think there are as many celebrity guests, which is a good thing, I think. Um who, who what else what did we see? We saw a bit more infamous, didn't we? Second Sons, um, and while I don't like the name of the protagonist, because Delsin is a really stupid name, like, the actual game is I'm, looking good. I'm kind of warming to that a little bit, although I do have my own name for it now. Yeah? Which is Hatmandu. <laughs> oh, oh, I like it. Thanks. I like it. Beanie Man. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's got, he's got a stupid hat, but it's looking like it could be fun. Um, I'm to that hat. I think I actually own that hat. <laughs> that, that might be I know why. Too, I know too many people that own that hat and don't take that hat off. Oh, okay. I uh, take my hat off to you. People need to take that hat off every now and again. Wash it. Come on, guys. Um, yeah, it's looking like the environmental breaking stuff is back and it's better. Because um, Infamous 2 had brilliant environmental destruction in it. Like, entire streets would get exploded, which was awesome. And this is like, again, doing that same thing, keeping it going. Um, I like that there's now like, there's a dynamic between Delson and his brother, I think it's called. Is his brother? Mm-hmm. 
who's with him, uh, and his brother's like one of these, you know, mutant hunter guys, and, and then it turns out that the kid who's a bit of a screw-up turns out to be a mutant, and then they kind of, you know, he's got this kind of warring, you know, internal debate going on through the whole thing. Uh, and it's good because I, I'm one of the very few people um, that in Infamous 1 and 2 liked Zeke, who was uh, Cole McGrath's fat friend. Oh, yeah, I like Zeke. I love I... Zeke, and he got so much crap online, and I really, really like Zeke. And, and then, like, again, the ending of Infamous 2, I won't spoil it, but bloody Christ. Oh, especially the bad ending. Oh. The, the strange thing is that um, that for, for all the... The, the plaudits that the um, that the infamous games have gotten, there's there's always been a, a feeling that that they're never that highly. How can I put it? They're they're not that high up within the appreciation of of, of Sony's the estimation. Maybe. Yeah, they're not in the ladder of the things they've got. It's not at the top five. And I get, I get the feeling. Do you know what I mean? That, like, you've, you've got your Uncharted, you've got your Gran Turismo, you've got a little big, and then kind of a couple of steps down, you've got your Infamous. I know what you mean. It's kind of, it's not the I, sort of thing you'd see an advert for on telly. I get the feeling that this this might be a bit of a dark horse, you know. Mm. Um, I hope they push this one hard, because I really want to see this one do well, because I think Sucker Punch deserve it, because the last two Infamouses have been fantastic. They've been some of the best games on the PS3. Um, and they they deserve a monster hit. They absolutely deserve one, and I think this could be their one. Especially, you know, coming out. I think it's, they're launching it uh, quarter one, so it's not going to be out for launch. Okay. But it could be one of the ones that spurs people to buy the PS4 a bit later on. Because mm-hmm. um, again, it's it's just looking like fun on the bun. Proper proper fun. Uh, what else did we find out? We found out that PlayStation Plus is carrying on straight over to the PS4, which is superb. Yep, good move. Uh, and they're sticking a version of Drive Club in with it, which, while I don't really care for Drive Club, I'll take a free next-gen game. Yeah, but they... they okay, they, what uh, is? I, I saw some, some stuff uh, with regards to that, and uh, with people saying, like, oh, is it just going to be a gimped version? You and I had had the, the conversation of, well, you know, is it going to be like... Uh, the prologue. Yeah, mm. and apparently it's it's essentially the full game, the proper game, mm. but with less tracks and less cars. Um, which but is fine. Going, but there's going to be a there's going to be a discount for those people on PlayStation Plus if they want to pick up those extra cars and those extra tracks. That's so it's like, not nice. That's, that's awesome. what I want. That's what yeah. I wanted to hear. It's well, it it comes across as because um, I, I sound like I'm I'm sort of doing the SDF thing a little bit here. But, um, <laughs> Welcome it sounds, to the dark it Sounds to me like a like a company that are treating their audience well. Hmm. Um, they, they want you to buy their machine and they, they want, want you to invest in it. Well, if if this is the push that Sony are going to continue with, hmm. within the fact that, perhaps even cynically, if they're looking like they've got their um, their rivals on the ropes, and they want to they want to push that a stage further, then it's you know as far as I'm concerned, this is it's still good for the consumer because you're getting everything you want. Hmm. Um, I think Microsoft are going to have to respond to it in some way, aren't they? I mean, they they can't. They're not going to let Sony win. Yeah, um, they're gonna have to. They're gonna have to. I mean, look at. Um, I mean, the, like last gen, uh, the Xbox 360 streamed ahead, didn't it? Uh, and by the end of its life cycle, the PS4 was. I mean, Sony, they were the little engine that could by the end of it. Yeah. They were. It was better for them to have a a generation in third place because it really made them, you know, think, you know, what what do gamers actually want out of their machines? And I think they're delivering it. Well, I, th- I think it's interesting that Sony, you know, Sony don't get don't get let off easily within this. That you know, they it wasn't that long ago when they were saying, "Oh, if you can't afford a, a, a PlayStation Three, then get a, get second, a second job." job. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. Um. So, you know, it's 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 nice to see it when when a company kind of gets the shit together. Hmm. Um, and they actually appear to be learning from their mistakes. Yeah, I mean they they were they were the darlings of uh, the PlayStation One, darlings of PlayStation Two, and you know to, have, I I you know I've got no problem with my PlayStation Three, but um to have fallen as far behind when you consider how far in front they were with the first two machines mm. is strange, really strange. It's, it is. This could be the year they come home. 
I <laughs> look at you speaking all warm. I'm so watery eyed. It's so good. Um, what else did Tony? They didn't show a lot of exclusives. They showed Knack again. Um, I think Knack's looking pretty fun. I I have no qualms about getting that one. I like my cutesy platformers. It's going to hit the ratchet and clank button. I think. Uh huh. That's a big. That's a very big button in my in my <laughs> heart. Hit that button and you'll have my money. Mm-hmm. Um, we also uh, we also found out. Let me choke up a little bit here. Um, let me clean my throat. When Trenton came on near the end to address uh, Microsoft's pet elephant. Did, did this really, really... Was, was this like, Dad, you've come home? It was... It was the, the applause that was had every time they made a statement... I think apparently it was journalists as well, and they don't usually actually applaud. Like you'll get people that will come in and watch the show, but the journalists will sit there quietly. That didn't, and you hear that a couple sound like whoopers. Whoopers yeah. in the Microsoft show for definite. Yeah, clapping at weird points and then not clapping at other points where it, like oh, that deserves a clap, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. And nothing. It's like they're pre-planned claps, but the the whole place was going. And you see a few tweets after going, yeah, that was all genuine applause, a genuine cheering. Um, and it was just it was just hit after hit after hit after hit, and it was like boom, no twenty four hour checks. Boom, you can usually use games. Boom, you can swap them with your friends. It was just one after the other, and I tell you, at like what quarter to four in the morning, uh-huh. sitting there, it was it woke me the fuck up. I tell you that much. <laughs> and I was talking to to our friend Minty from the Polygon forums uh, on Skype at the time, mm. and we were both sitting there going. It's over. Holy crap. <laughs> it was just glorious. Uh, and then, and then, yeah, 10 minutes later, um, old Beardface comes out and, and drops the price bomb as well. It's like, wow. It's like, that is what you want. And apparently, um, I was reading, it was from, I think Charlie Hall put this bit of story up. They were talking to some of the executives after the, afterwards. And they're like, well, is this, you know, was all that in a reaction to what Microsoft did? And they were like, nope, it was our plan all along. Yeah, but did they... they... They would say that. Yeah, but it, it, it I, seems I suspect, quite genuine. <laughs> I suspect um, any 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 company worth the salt, if they um, if they can see a weakness and can plunge mm. the knife in deeper. Oh, um, it was a very directed thing, definitely. Like we won't record a check every twenty four hours. It's like, who, why? Whenever would anyone ever have to say a sentence like that? I loved I loved the uh, the sharing youth game video. I thought mm. that was absolutely oh, hilarious. That's, Hit the hit the nail on the head so well, and do you know what? Again, out of the conference, I think the unlikeliest hero, Shuhei Yoshida, has come out as my favourite person of the whole conference. Yeah, but did, and we are a we are a Souls podcast. And we it are. Has said, it has to be said that uh, um, Yoshida was the man in charge of um, of Demon Souls, wasn't he? And mm. he he now considers it his favourite his favourite game. Yeah, and he wants to do that, some more with it, which is yeah, like go on Yoshida. But, but admits that Sony dropped the ball with it massively. Mm. Um, that they're not talking about it, I think, suggests that they. Um, well, it's essentially, you've got you've got the ability to not just get um, a, a fan base on side, but if there are people, Dark Souls has done far more than Demon Souls did sales wise. Of course. So essentially, you could be tempting those people into buying your machine by giving them yeah. some more of what they love. Absolutely, so it's a yeah. potential it's a potential system system seller for Sony. And if they can if they can realise that, that's a big deal. Mm. I completely agree. And I mean the, honestly the way it's going, I mean I know there'll be people that will buy their, you know, whatever machine they like, but I can't see the Xbox One selling as much as the PS3 is. I really can't. I absolutely cannot see it at all for a couple of years even. I'm, I'm the damage they've done in the first two press conferences has and the misinformation afterwards, the damage they've done, it's gonna take years to fix. I'm rather shocked by the landslide to be honest. Mm. I didn't expect it. No. I, I, I didn't expect it and it was just I mean, other than the, the used games and the price thing, the Sony conference they didn't show off that much really. Um, they showed off some Assassin's Creed that broke, which was quite funny. Um, they showed off the Indies, which was a good bit of news, but there was nothing kind of, you know, there's no sort of triple A, you know, holy shit moment apart from those two. But it's solid, you know? And I think in terms of like just showing games, Microsoft probably won, but in terms of showing people what they actually want, I think Sony hit it right on the head. Uh, and I was, yeah, I was, like I said, I was buzzing all the way through till the next day and I didn't go to bed until 
11 p.m. the next day, and I was just buzzing the whole way through, just excited. That's it's exciting. exciting again. I'm excited about the new consoles again. It's brilliant, and they're coming, and they're new, and they're shiny, and it's going to be a wonderful land of beautiful toys, and I'm going to have the best one. I, I think it's important, though, from a, a consumer perspective that um, people aren't taking what they're forced. Mm. Um, they're not sucking up, they're just taking what they're given now. People yeah. are looking into it, and people are talking about it. Yeah. And that's the, the beauty of where we are at this point is that we've got things like, you know, Facebook and Twitter and forums and all sorts of avenues to chat about stuff with. And, you've all, you, you know, you'll see the buzz about it, whatever kind of network you end up on, which is probably why I don't think we were there, but, you know, seven years ago when the last machines came out. Hmm. I mean, like even, I mean, Twitter in particular, you know, you're watching the conferences live and I had to turn it off because they were just blowing up. There was just notifications coming through left, right and centre. And I don't follow that many people. <laughs> You know, and every every kind of you know minute, ten new tweets is like I can't keep up with that. It's too much. I can't do it. Um, but yeah, I, I thought Sony had a great show. Uh, it showed me what I wanted to see, um, and it said the things that I wanted to hear. And you know, top marks. Uh, and yeah, who was who was next? Um, I, th- I think it was. Uh, it was Nintendo Direct the next day, wasn't it? Now I want to hear what you think about this one. Now. Uh, it was, a, it was a strange one with Nintendo Direct because I was I was I was really wanting something that I'd I'd not seen before particularly, um, and I, initially I mean I've, I've I've loved the Nintendo Directs I think they've been fantastic, um, and sort of liked a lot of Nintendo's attitude to what they wanted to do with um, with E3. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, with setting up the Best Buy so that people could people could play the games and, and all that sort of stuff, great. Um, but it seemed it seemed to me a little bit too intimate, um, and I, I was disappointed by that. Mm. And I think we, I think many of many of us that that you know are, are fans of the company were hoping for that something which would tip us over the edge. This mm. there's something that we hadn't heard before. Um, and whilst they they showed off little snippets of what was coming, they didn't really do a great job of it. Was it seemed like they were trying to cram too much in. Um, in all honesty, mm. the um, trailers were very short. Thought they were. Yeah. And like I mean, like you say, um, I I know Yoshi from the forum. He's a uh, he's a big Nintendo guy, and he was saying he was pretty. You know, he seemed to look quite disappointed about it afterwards. Uh, I'm not sure if his opinion changed since, but initially after the thing, it was quite disappointed. Because it felt it was a really safe conference, I thought. Well, the weird thing was afterwards, um, and this, you know, thank you Twitter for this, but um, someone posted up, go to go to Nintendo's YouTube, it's mental. Um, and you went over there, and they just got these really long, like, developers' diaries mm. about, uh, about the, the games that they'd shown. And even games that they hadn't shown, which was crazy. I remember, yeah, there was like, odds and sods coming out of stuff like they didn't show that. Yeah. What? Uh, I saw, um, it, I saw an incredible like Shin Megami Tensei game, which which hmm. wasn't even vaguely shown at the. Yeah, I, I mean, I watched the, the Bayonetta one, um, and do you know what? Honestly, watching the Bayonetta video is going to just sound like you know, yeah, whatever. Don't you know? I don't even care. But like. I watched the Bayonetta video and it didn't surprise me at all. It's like that just looks like more Bayonetta. That, like it I, doesn't look like they've gone the next level of mental. I disagree with you. Yeah, I. I oh, well, I, she's I, had I, a haircut and nothing else has changed. Nah, nah, that was I, it. I, I didn't see anything I, different. I didn't see anything I, you. I need to. I need to, to direct you to uh, to a few more vids. I think. Mm. Um, be, because the, the the Bayonetta bit of Nintendo Direct. I'd probably agree with you. The stuff that I've seen since, I've kind of gone, "Fuck off! That looks awesome." <laughs> uh, in in particular, there's a um, there's a Jonathan Holmes playing it on Destructoid, which I saw this morning, uh, which was really really good. <laughs> and then the the thing on Nintendo's YouTube was like the the guy from Platinum Games, where he's like, obviously, with us being the greatest development studio in the world, <laughs> and he's <laughs> saying it like really really dead face, with like, do do you actually? I actually believe this. I, I am a I am a fan of platinum, but uh, is this is this is this what you think? <laughs> um, but yeah, there was there was there was tons on uh, Nintendo's YouTube, mm. and there was a Shin Megami Tensei game which looked 
fucking awesome. Set in Edo period uh, Japan, I think. Yeah. I saw something on the stream that looked like it might have been that, but that looked really bad, so it can't have been that. But um, but yeah, I was I was a little and X looks phenomenal. I think X is one of the greatest games of the show. X is one of the ones that jumped out for me definitely. Yeah. I'm not sure if that is that's the real name where it was going to have or it's the title is going to be a Zeno something. Hmm. Uh, but X is it's flyy, shooty, transforming. Yeah, that that. And- that that looked like one of the things that I would want to play. Also, the, the the stuff that I've seen in the aftermath of, uh, of Mario Kart Eight just mm. sounds fantastic. Um, and the um, the reason that uh, it's it's not coming out when they say it was is that um, it's the single player is currently sixty frames sixty frames per second, <laughs> um, and they want to get the uh, the uh, the multiplayer doing the same. Oh, nice. Seriously, thanks. See thanks, now Nintendo. again, Mario Kart for me. Apart from the riding on wall stuff, it it sounds like such high expectations. Apart from the fact they can now ride on walls, <laughs> um, again, it didn't really surprise me. I, I was watching it thinking this just looks like the Wii one. It's... And I didn't, admittedly, I didn't play a lot of the Wii one, but it's like this just looks like more of that, and it didn't surprise me. It didn't excite me. It seems to be. It seems to be combining a lot of of other Mario Karts together and the, the tracks once again from the from the stuff that I've seen on the on the Nintendo YouTube afterwards they seem to be combining a, a lot of the a lot of the stuff from previous uh, Mario Karts and, mm. and sort of putting it to the, the tracks look for absolutely superb um, and I am double double up for Mario Kart 8 I'd, I'd have to say that whilst in the in the presentation itself um it might not have wowed me. The stuff that I've seen afterwards hmm. has done. Um, and interestingly, um, Nintendo had, had got their, um, their their thing at Best Buy, which they'd announced beforehand. But apparently, the um, the queues for for the games were two hours long. I heard that. Buy. Yeah, a couple of our Polygon guys went down. I know um, uh, Super Noob from the forums went down to that, and he said it was a big big line. But he said he had a fun time. But they they had. Uh, it's one thing sort of um, showing off Mario Kart 8 at, at E3. Mm. So the one people can play it. Yeah, that's. I want more of that. I mean, the, uh, Mario Kart 8 and I believe the, the Donkey Kong game was mm. um, Tropical Freeze was, yeah, yeah, was down there. And I think even... It's interesting that there were a portion of people that perhaps saw the Nintendo conference and kind of went, all right then. And then went down to Best Buy and played those games and came back and went, they were fucking brilliant, mm. and that's 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 interesting because you know you, I th- I think the Nintendo Direct during the conference was a little bit of a misfire, but I think that the Best Buy mm. idea was superb, and you got people talking about those games afterwards. Yeah. The journalists were then on the floor with those games straight afterwards, and you building up buzz. Um, the the stuff. I was watching game trailers afterwards and they were saying, oh, Nintendo have got a big announcement coming up in 45 minutes. And it turns out to be the girl from uh, Wii Fit being in Smash. Yeah, they didn't put that in the thing on the trailer. I was thinking, I I only found that out the next day. I was like, what? what you? I think even Jeff Keighley went, what are they even thinking? (laughs) um, I don't know. I think that's quite a funny addition. Yeah, but it's... it's the kind of it's that Rob kind of Rob the robot thing. It's like, oh, go on then. That was pretty funny. Um, but the the addition of Mega Man to Smash Brothers seems to have uh, that was the one that seems to have uh, made a lot of people bounce, blew the uh, top off of it. Yeah. So I I think there are, there are games there, and I still think mm. they hold stuff back. Um, apparently they they held the new Zelda back. Mm. Um, well, there was word that the Metroid was coming, and that didn't happen. Yeah, so I, I think they're holding stuff back, but you can see Nintendo's focus is still on games, is still mm. on having fun. And whilst um, you know I'm, I'm not a fan of him par se, uh, what they said about uh, traded games was brilliant. Where they they basically said we find that with our games that there's a lesser trade in because people want to keep playing them. Yeah, and that's what you want to do. You want to make and, a game that people don't want to trade, and then it doesn't become an issue. Well, the thing is that um, a lot of Nintendo's own games still command staggeringly high prices at second hand. Yep. Like, the, the Metroid Trilogy is still going for between 25 and 40 quid. Melee, Melee does as well. Oh, I've seen I've seen Melee for about 10 or on Wii, I think. 
Oh, it, on, uh, it, do you mean Brawl or Melee? Oh, I don't know. Melee on the GameCube is is uh, oh, yeah, GameCube. It's more it's more expensive than a GameCube. Yeah. Which is mental. <laughs> <It's probably laughs> like, um, and you know, I I I've been looking at um since I got a 3DS a little while ago. I've been looking at Mario Kart 7 and second hand that's still 25 quid. Mm. Um, oh, last thing, poly, um, Smash Brothers making a DS version. Yeah. Brilliant. Oh, well, did, did you see the transition? Oh, I, I thought the transition was fantastic. That was clever. Like, I was thinking, are we watching a Street Fighter 4? How that kind of like, you know, sort of drawn, big, thick outlines kind of looked yeah. to it. I was like, are we watching a Street Fighter 4? Because that's mental. But, um, but yeah, I, I, I think that initially it seemed... I, I was watching, waiting for something that didn't happen. I started mm. to sigh a little bit. It was kind of, it's over. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then, then I started to bounce around a few places and, you know, watched a mm. lot of the stuff on the YouTube channel. Uh, there was lots of lots of good information coming back from Best Buy. And they seemed to, whilst the initial, the initial hit wasn't there, I think they, they maintained an even built buzz afterwards. They uh, pulled it reverse Microsoft. The stuff yeah, that came did. out after the show made it look better. Yeah, I, 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 st- I mean, you, you know my stance. I think it's a fantastic system. Mm. And I think a uh, system is only as good as the games that you put on it. And there are games that people want to play. Um, and, you know, if, if um, Microsoft are launching their system at 429 and the Wii is, you know, holding uh, currently, depending on which what? version you get, between 100? 150 and, and 200-ish... Mm. And two hundred and fifty and two fifty, I think it is. Yeah. Um, that I, th- I think they're on to a winner, but they need to start marketing it properly. And I, I still think that they're they're waiting for the, the influx, the next influx of games to really give the system a push. I think they're waiting on that. We we fit you, which apparently is a thing. That I'm surprised did, there's been that's all gang bust. I mean, Laura, uh, my missus, used to work in game mm-hmm. during the the big years of the Wii. Uh, and we fits you should just come and go apparently. Well, I'm I'm wondering why there's been no mention whatsoever of a new Wii Sports Resort yet. Mm, that's yeah yeah. I, it seems I like I the kind of thing they'd want to get out immediately because that was the thing that sold that Wii, wasn't it? I actually think that that's, that they're holding that back because the, the the same thing that you can apply to the Wii now mm. um, was said about the 3DS for a while, and then they had a, a volley of really great games. And then started to remarket the system, and I think that will happen with with the Wii. But I'm wondering if, uh, as to what the marketing is going to be like mm. pre Christmas, and um, as to if all of these games are coming out in 2014, as to uh, as to whether their push is maybe going to be from January onwards. You know, let, let the big boys get the fighting out of the way, and then when the new games start, the new to, year, give it a push there. Up, yeah, I think that, that that might even be a wise idea in the same way as mm. you know they kind of they kind of ducked out of doing a press conference. Yeah, I mean this uh, this Christmas is going to be a it's going to be a fun old time. I think. I think it's going to competition is always good for the consumer. Mm. Um, uh, but it's I don't think I've ever seen a swing against the system and a public reaction, not just from the gaming community but beyond that. Mm. I mean, some, as a little aside as well, one thing that popped up on uh, on my Twitter was someone was saying, well, um, that means Xbox is fucked for fighting tournaments. And somebody else said, well, what do you mean? They were like, well, if your Xbox is linked to your friends list and only your friends list can play the games, what happens when loads of people turn up for a fighting tournament? Uh, that's, oh, God. Oh, and I was, God. I, I hadn't even thought of that. Mind so, you, so, if the only fighting game they've got is Killer Instinct, it doesn't matter. Yeah, well... <laughs> Free-to-play fighter shipping with one fighter? No. And, and word has it that the, the PS4 pad is phenomenal. I've heard yeah, nothing but good news about the I've PS4 heard, pad. Yeah, and even before Ben Kajera of Penny Arcade said it's <laughs> like he's touching a girl's breast in the back of a car or... Yep. Like, staggeringly vile... Memory. I mean, all, 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 the, all the steps that have been taken for equality in this industry, especially recently, mm. and somebody comes out with a shite, shite volley like that. <laughs> Seriously, fuck off. <laughs> it made me laugh. I liked it. Uh, I, I it just, was evocative and emotive, and it hit just the right button. I just, no, <laughs> it, it actually made me angry. <laughs> 
yeah, I, I'm looking forward. Speaking of free-to-play fighters, one last thing before we finish. Um, if you've got a PS3, absolutely download yourself some Tekken Revolution. It is a free-to-play version of Tekken. Um, you get seven characters to start with, and you can unlock about four more. Uh, and it's basically, without going too much into detail, it's like having an arcade in your house. Awesome. I bloody love it. It's great. It's not as good as Tekken Tag Tournament 2, but it is free, and it uses the same engine and it's exactly the same battle system. Uh, and there's nothing, no one's been gimped. Everyone's got their whole move sets. Um, you can fight. You can get a good half an hour's worth of free fun out of it before you have to pay any money. And even then, in two and a half hours, you can try again. Cool. It's proper, proper good. And if you've been curious about Tekken or if you like Tekken or if you don't like... Do you know what? It's free. I don't care. Buy it. Yeah. I mean, well, download is, it for free. It's great. There, there is something E3-wise that uh, that I haven't spoken about, which is uh, Arkham Origins, which I was very, very impressed with. I... In, in light of all this Batman talk, uh, Mrs. Laura is actually... She's playing Arkham City in the background right now. Well, um, She has Arkham, been for this whole podcast. Arkham Origins, they've, they, they'd said that um, uh, Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill weren't coming back. Mm. And um, I'd heard a snippet of... Troy Baker's doing the Joker. Yes, he is. Um, and I'd heard a snippet on the trailer. And I was like, you've... You've nailed that, mate. He's stupendously talented anyway. Mm. But I was like, you've nailed it. Um, but in this playthrough, they showed uh, Roger Craig Smith, who's the voice of Chris Redfield, and the, he was the voice of the first assassin in Assassin's Creed. Okay. al Tayyip ibn al Yeah. He's, uh, he's doing uh, Batman. And they showed this presentation, and he's absolutely nailed Conroy's voice. <laughs> To such a, an amazing degree, mm. it's it's perfect, um, and the the game just looks fun. They got a bit with, um, you know, you've got the detective vision. Yes. Well, Batman could uh, could find sort of a clue, and basically rewind the trajectory of a bullet and where a helicopter yeah. would come through, and the, the whole thing was just really really good. And I, I've been playing Arkham City as well this afternoon, <laughs> so um, so yeah, I'm I'm quite up for that. But and also there was a um, there's a brilliant thing that Matt Lees did where he, he did uh, he did the three awards and he took he made these awards up and took them round to companies like to to that Deadlight or is it Blacklight or Blacklight Retribution maybe I don't know this I think it's called Deadlight it's by Deep Silver that's coming out yeah um, he gave him the award for the the seems seems remarkably familiar award. <laughs> <laughs> you saw a guy from Deep Silver going, well, that's not always a bad thing, is it? It was like, no, not always. <laughs> and, and he was sort of giving out these awards, and the best one was given to um, Project uh, CD Project Red. Oh yeah, yeah. Fifty three, and it was the award least likely to turn out to be arse. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, and he also did a, a did a thing as well with. Um, where he was saying that uh, there was that scandal recently about journalists, you know, mm. and what they should and shouldn't accept. Um, and we'd often we'd often get sort of gaming T-shirts, but mm. it was mentioned that you're essentially advertising somebody's game when you were them. He says, so, but what if I gave, gave T-shirts away? He was like, what if I made those T-shirts? <laughs> and he sort of used these sort of, um, these felt tips for, for t-shirts and like drew out a load of gaming t-shirts and tried to give the them to people at food. Yeah. Brilliant. The guy from the guy from Microsoft when he gave him a, a Halo Chief 5 <laughs> t-shirt was just like, yeah, that's great. That's fantastic. And then um, tries to give one to the, the people at the Gran Turismo booth um, and they wouldn't accept it. And then he goes to the people at Forza and said, you can always, you can always rub the Gran Turismo out. <laughs> um, and there was a Wolfenstein one that he couldn't get rid of because he couldn't find anybody. But um, I noticed on the video the day before he was wearing a T-shirt that he'd made which said Sonic the fucking Hedgehog. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's yeah. his full name. Kudos, kudos to the Lees again for doing kudos. some, some, some awesome. belting stuff. He also <laughs> did a video where um, he was seeing how popular the, the the company's booths were by the amount of lunges that he could do. <laughs> So uh, how much room there was to lunge. So, yeah, those those were highlights for me. 
Awesome. But you, you watched a lot of Polygon coverage, didn't you? I watched so much Polygon coverage. I was watching it for the entire day. Uh, Justin McElroy was kicking it out of the park every single day. I he made E3 in those dull mo- in those dark moments when it's you know it's half four in the morning and you're sort of starting you're a bit excited but you're starting to doze off and the coverage they were doing was just bang on really. Frank- enjoy- frankly, you've been up for 36 hours. I'm surprised you couldn't see through time. It was getting close. I did put on I, at about nine o'clock. I put Rock Band on to try and wake myself up, and at one point, the kind of the notes at the bottom of the screen started kind of moving left and right. <laughs> I thought it might be time to stop now, and apparently, yeah. I took my book to bed, passed out in bed with my book on my face. I think Sean mentioned this, yeah. Yeah, that was a thing that happened apparently. So, so yeah, so you so you you rated the poly coverage then. I loved it. Really, I really, loved it. I really enjoyed that besties. I thought it was one of the one of the finest they've done. With the, 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 the scavenger hunt, the scavenger hunt, yeah. Oh That's my it. god, the scavenger hunt was the, my favourite thing out of E3. Oh my god, I loved that scavenger hunt. It made me wee myself laughing. They should do more of those things. Yeah, I think it's the the, the best one they've, they've they've done in quite some time. But I, I also think that um, because it was video, you could see the bit where. Um, where Russ was talking about, I think he was talking about that black light game, and Chris Plant was just looking at the camera, and just like throwing a look, saying yep. like, <laughs> "No, just well, again, Justin. Whenever he's like, whenever like Griffin, his brother, next one was talking, you'd see him just sort of, just sort of look to the camera every now and again, sort of stare at it for a minute, and then give a little smile, and then look back. <laughs> I was like, ah, oh, he's on television, bless him. But yeah, um, I really enjoyed that. I thought yeah, really no, I, I have very much, very, very much enjoyed this year's E3. Um, and all the information that's been falling out afterwards has been entertaining as well. Um, the next we have tried months. to cover lots of it with talk and things. Yes, and now my throat hurts because yeah. we've been talking about all the things. And these next couple of months are going to be brilliant. Yes, indeed. So, so as a, as a final aside, what's on your gaming... What's on your gaming calendar, I guess, for the rest of the year. The rest of the year, okay. The rest of the year, what have we got so far? Okay. Well, topically, uh, Demon Souls, which we're talking about next week, uh, which I'm playing more of again and getting right back into that, but we'll save that for next week. Uh, yeah, I've, I've been playing it all through this podcast. Uh, Do- uh, Dog- Doggins Dragma, mm-hmm. which I've been enjoying very, very much so. Um, I've had my eye on XCOM ever since I downloaded it. And yeah, everything on my Vita. Particularly I, Wipeout, because I'm loving the crap out of Wipeout. I was meaning more more within the games well, what's coming yet, soon. To, yet to be released. Oh, but, uh, then probably it's Arkham Origins, I reckon. Mm-hmm. Um, what's coming out? Last well, of Us has already I'd, come out, so that's done. For me, I'd say um, I'd be with you on, on Arkham Origins. Mm. Um, for me, Link to the Past 2 is a definite purchase, because it looks fantastic. Mm. Um, oh, Saints Row Four. There we go. I, I believe like, Saints draw Row. Draw a line under it. Done. I believe Saints Row Three is coming to uh, PlayStation Plus it within the next be. couple of months. Yeah. Um, that's DMC and Battlefield Three apparently. Which is again crazy value. Yes. Crazy um, value. But of other stuff, I'm, I'm I'm trying to think. I'd like to like to pick up Etrian Odyssey mm-hmm. in. August because I, I really like the first one. I uh, really like the first one. Um, but of all the stuff I'm trying to think, I mean, I, I, in all honesty, I've been pondering getting a Vita hmm. um, because now I'm on PlayStation Plus. There's free games that I can I can play on it. Yeah. Also, I, I mean, the, the most disappointing announcement of E3, which I'll curve yeah. back in in a minute, <laughs> was the announcement that Square Enix were bringing. Uh, Deus Ex Human Revolution director's cut to everything um, and I thought that was going to be something a little bit special for for Wii U owners but, um, but now but, we all get it so yay yeah but um, the interesting thing that, that for, for you is that, is that uh, all of the features that um, that were primed for the Wii U are going to be active if you've got a Vita and a PS3 hmm so essentially, you can do all the all the uh, all the mini games and all the touch screen stuff on your on your Vita as you're playing. Which will be nice. Yeah, which it looks fantastic on on Wii U doing all those those little games that way. And yeah, um, whilst I can understand it from a, a business point of view, because Square Enix have uh, 
bringing everything to everything. And I I did call that on the on the E3 previews. That I said, <laughs> that I, said <laughs> I said sort of why don't they just call it Final Fantasy 15? And I reckon it'll. And they did, and it, it was yeah. glorious. So um so yeah, it doesn't doesn't particularly surprise me within that. I mm. I was just a a little bit disappointed because I I just want people to see the machine that I'm enjoying. And that's what it, it, I have. This, I'm the same with the Vita. I love this little machine to bits. I just wish they had more games. Well, I, I, I saw a, a sliver of that with you last year with Bayonetta 2. <laughs> when, when your tears washed the world. I was... Um, I, I don't want to use the B word that we don't say online, but I, I, I was hot but <laughs> There was quite a lot of, of uh, preparation H needed there. <laughs> but I think I'm okay now. I'm all right with it now. Um, but yeah, no, these... Next couple of months are going to be exciting times to be a game person. Yes. Yay. And anyway, the, the next time that we do a podcast, we're going to do a, a little bit of a retrospective on Demon Souls before oh. we to Dark Souls. And hopefully oh. uh, those people that have got PlayStation Plus will delve into it because it's it's not as impenetrable as, as some reviews and some journalists and some hype might have you believe. So. Yes. It's not hard. It's challenging. It's beautiful. And it is. It, it is still a stunning game. Mm. But we'll That's do that really, next time. Let's not do really that now. Really stunning game. <laughs> it is glorious. But yeah. more of that next week. Uh, my name was Paddy. You have been listening to Twin Humanities, the Poly my name Dark is Souls still podcast. CJ. <laughs> this, this was the week we didn't talk about Dark Souls again. But it doesn't matter because we're back on it next week. So it's fine. Don't worry. It's coming. Yeah. It's coming. Don't worry. Uh, thank you all for listening. As always, leave comments on wherever you're listening, and we will see you next week. YouTube, we've got a Tumblr as well, twinhumanities.tumblr.com. Uh, if Paddy wants to do something for it, that would be lovely. I will soon, I promise. Thank you, lovely. <laughs> okay, uh, bye, everybody. Bye. bye.